Good morning, all of you. So, let me start this matrix approach. The second part of the matrix approach I will be dealing with. So, basically, matrix method of structural analysis is an extension of your classical approach. What we have done in the first few chapters of slope deflection, moment distribution, and the Connie's approach. So, slope deflection, moment distribution, Connie's approach, we call them as classical. Why the name classical? Because that was been used from long ago. So, that's why we call them as a classical method. In the recent development of your computers, and high-end computers, supercomputers and all. So, people started thinking what to do to reduce the analysis part. So, it is only the mathematical approach what they have converted into a software here to solve the number of equations. You have studied in your slope deflection, maximum unknowns you have studied is only 3. So, that means 3 linear symmetries equations can be solved by using your simple calculators. If it exceeds fourth, then what we can do, you can reduce from 4 to 3, then again solve it using the calculator. Maybe 5 also you can do it. Once it exceeds more than that, then it will become very difficult by use to solve by manual approach. That means using calculator means it is a manual approach. So, what the people started thinking about 4 decades back to use the number of unknowns, whatever the degrees of freedom, that many number of equations used to generate. You think of a building having 4 spans and 4 base and number of stories about 6, then it goes to thousands of equations because each node where it is connected by beam column and above beam and the below column and above column, there will be 6 degrees of freedom like that multiplied by number of nodes minus the available degrees of equations, equilibrium equations, it comes to about thousands of equations to solve. In that case, people started using a mathematical approach, solving the equations by your Gauss elimination or Gauss idle or Jordan method, so that you can work back to get the unknowns required. What are the unknowns in your structural analysis? They are basically displacements or forces, either of the two. If you use displacement as the unknowns, then it becomes your flexibility approach. If it is force is unknown, then it becomes flexibility approach. So basically your matrix method can be solved by using two approaches. One is flexibility approach, the second one is stiffness approach. Flexibility approach, you have remember this equation, the basic equation of your strength of materials. Delta L is PL by AE. What is this delta L? This is nothing but your deformation. If you take a single degree of freedom system wherein if I take a spring connected with a mass, if you pull this spring by applying a force P, it deforms to certain amount we call it as delta L. Why we call single degree? It can only vibrate in one direction, that's why we call it as a single degree of freedom system. So, P is applied, it moves through an amount of delta L, that can be calculated by using your basic equation of deformation from strength of materials, it is L by AE into P. These two are constant, deformation and force, they are related by the property of the spring, the length of the spring, area of cross section and elasticity of that, the Young's models of elasticity so that you can get the force. This particular term we call it as flexibility, flexibility coefficient. In a general format, we can put this equation as D is equal to capital F into P, where D is the deformation unknowns, F is the flexibility value and P is the force. If it is only one degree of freedom, you will get only one equation. If you have number of degrees of freedom, that means number of equations you will get in the forum. If you can take it as, suppose if you have three degrees of freedom, I have taken single degree, if it is a three degrees of freedom, then I can put it as D1 is equal to F11 P1 plus F12 P2 plus F13 P3. Similarly, your second is F21 P1, F22 P2 plus F23 P3. And the third equation is F31 
थ्री वन पी वन एफ थ्री टू पी टू प्लस एफ थ्री थ्री पी थ्री नाउ इमेजिन इफ नंबर ऑफ डिग्रीज आर मोर द सेम नंबर ऑफ इक्वेशन आर टू रिपीट इफ इट इज फोर्थ वन आई विल गेट एफ वन फोर इंटू पी फोर फिफ्थ वन एफ वन फाइव इंटू पी फाइव लाइक दैट आई विल गेट टू मोर इक्वेशन If there are ten, we'll get ten equations. So why the people are thinking that? Can we put them into matrix form now? D1, D2, and D3. It becomes your displacement matrix. It is three rows and one column, so it is one cross three, or we can call them as vector instead of matrix. That is equal to, and I'll take all these coefficients for my matrix. You have f11. F one two, F one three, F two one, F two two, F two three, F three one, F three two, F three t. This is your flexibility matrix. What you call it as? What is the size of this now? How many unknowns? It will be always symmetric in nature. Three cross three, and coming to the force matrix i have three known values p1 p2 and p3 so this is again your vector it will be 1 cross 3 sorry it is 3 cross 1 sorry three rows and one column this one is also three rows and one column so finally you can put it in the equation as d is equal to matrix f into matrix p this is the basis of your flexibility approach so what i have reduced these simultaneous equations in the form of matrix left hand side is a displacement matrix right hand side combination of your flexibility matrix and as well as force matrix since you have three unknowns the matrix size is 3 cross 3 and this is again a column matrix here of 3 cross 1 column matrix on the left and 3 cross 1 finally if you put it in the form of a single equation where i have written single degree of modem here it is d is equal to f into p it is matrix d matrix f into matrix p any number of unknowns we can use it to solve it this is only where we use our computer rest of the things it is all the logical approaches programming you have to write to get the force what are the unknowns we require it depends on the problem so all the quantities of structural analysis structural quantities like shear force bending moment axial force torsion everything we can calculate by using this approach so this is basis of your flexibility on the same line i can use the other approach we call them as stiffness approach so i am considering more about this we have to derive the equations here for that one same thing now suppose if you move this mass through an amount of delta l some known distance and what will be the force that will be probably applied here to move that one that you can calculate using the equation p is equal to ae by l into delta l the same equation i have taken p as a known delta l is known now it becomes this form and here this particular component we call that as stiffness stiffness of the particular member so the same equation you can put a p is equal to k into d in the case of single degree of freedom system the equation reduces to p is equal to k into d where p is the force to be found to be applied here to get a delta l whatever the distance here so particularly this k nothing but equal to displacement per unit so our force per unit displacement once you get that you have a displacement into force per unit displacement you will get the force required for the entire system so using this suppose if we apply the same condition for multiple degrees of freedom system so what will be the equation now i will be putting it that equation now suppose i have again same 3 degrees of freedom system p1 is equal to k11 into d1 k12 into d2 k13 into d3 the same lines to get the force k 
टू वन इंटू डी वन के टू टू इंटू डी टू के टू थ्री इंटू डी थ्री एंड पी थ्री इक्वल टू के थ्री वन इंटू डी वन के थ्री टू इंटू डी टू प्लस के थ्री थ्री इंटू डी थ्री If you put the same thing in the form of matrix, left hand side is now P1, P2, and P3. It is 3 cross 1 is equal to. This will be K11, 12, 13, K21, 22, and K23, K31, 32. And K three three, and here it is D one, D two, and D three. The both equations look similar, but a lot of differences are there. This is again three cross three, and this is three cross one. If you multiply these, you will get three cross one. That's what we require on the left hand side: P one, P two, and P three. The generalized format you can put is matrix P is equal to matrix K. Into matrix D. You remember the flexibility approach is matrix D is equal to matrix F into matrix P. P and D are exchanged at the same time. This becomes reversed K. Now, what will be the relation between K and F? Now, can you arrive at it? Is it K is equal to F or what it is now? K is equal to matrix f inverse so 1 by k is f or f is equal to 1 by k or k is equal to 1 by f the so only the coefficient we call them as flexibility coefficient in the case of flexibility approach here we call them as stiffness coefficients what is the stiffness coefficients k11 now k11 is the deformation unit deformation or force required for unit deformation force required at 1 for the deformation at 2 similarly force required at 1 for the deformation at 3 because these three are interrelated the effect of deformation in one direction will be there on the other direction that's why we are using the combination you can see p1 is not only dependent on d1 it depends on d2 and as well as d3 similarly you will have a effect on p2 from d1 and d3 of course direct will be there from this and indirect from other The simple example you can quote you is suppose if you take a bar of circular dimension, if you apply a force in one direction P now, what happens to the length? You all studied in strength of materials, so length will increase because you are applying a tensile force. Length increases if you take the diameter of the bar as d. What happens to the diameter? The diameter reduces. The diameter reduces say by an amount of delta d. And increase in length will be of delta. I didn't apply any force in this diametric direction, but still its effect is there. When the load is applied, tensile force applied on the rod. Once it extends, the diameter of that, or even a cross section also, whatever it is, the cross section dimensions reduces. So that's why we call. Suppose the same condition. If I apply compressive force here, what will happen? The length decreases. At the same time, the diameter. increases this will be increasing and this will be decrease so this direction of this force applied we call as a longitudinal strain or longitudinal elongation or deformation whereas other direction we call as a lateral one we have derived the relationship between lateral and longitudinal strain now that is whatever the original deformation by original length is strain so that is called as your angst sorry poisson's ratio poisson's ratio is defined as the lateral strain by longitudinal strain so all these basics are required to solve the problems by matrix in advanced to matrix we have finite element methods also so these are the basics of your flexibility and stiffness methods once using this basic equation we can solve the problems of course we have to know how to find these coefficients it is clear here you can observe the first column of the stiffness matrix it is k11 k21 and k31 apply unit 
rotation along the direction 1 find the forces developed at 1 2 and 3 that will give the elements of the first column similarly you can see here k 1 2 k 2 2 and k 3 2 whatever the force that is deformation d2 move it by unit rotation or unit movement apply that and find out the forces developed at 1 2 and 3 that will constitute the second column on the same lines apply unit couple or force along the direction 3 and find out the forces developed at 1 2 and 3 they will be k 1 1 sorry 1 3 2 3 and 3 3 that totally you will get 9 and since I said it is a symmetric matrix along the leading diagonal only these 3 will be there half diagonals you can see this is equal to this k 2 1 equal to k 1 2 because it is symmetric matrix k 1 3 equal to k 3 1 and k 2 3 equal to k 3 you do not need to find all the 6 only 3 if you can find then rest 3 you can simply replace them by equivalent because the deformation reciprocal principle delta i j is equal to delta j the deformation at i due to force at j is equal to deformation at j due to force at i that is basically from your original principle of Maxwell's reciprocal theorem. So using that principle you can able to find your stiffness coefficients use them into the equation of your stiffness relation there will be small changes in the relations when it gets to the actual problems then you can solve these problems by your simple matrix approach use the computers to solve it but right now since again we are constrained to do only three unknowns because beyond three unknowns it will be difficult to solve your matrix also up to three you can solve the matrix by using your calculators itself before going into actual problems we should first ascertain the general coordinate system with respect to your matrix method of analysis do not confuse your Cartesian or polar coordinate system with this one. Whatever we define here general coordinate system it refers to your force or displacements. Do not confuse with the Cartesian or your polar coordinate system. Let us take a portal frame simple portal frame here A B C D. So it is an indeterminate structure with three unknowns. So, because 3 degrees of freedom that means if you remove support D it becomes determinate. So, it becomes a cantilever bent. So, one end is free other end is fixed you can easily solve just by using your equations of equilibrium. Now, if you remove this now. So, I have taken out the support D here. The immediately these three forces will develop there. If you remove that free body diagram of D means this one. So, horizontal reaction, vertical reaction and a reacting moment. Forget about the directions, we take always positive directions when you take the coordinate system here and these three if you represent along the same directions, HD is represented as an arrow in the horizontal direction, VD in vertical direction and the moment is in the clockwise direction, it is a couple direction. The same directions we call them as 1, 2 and 3. So, these are the three coordinates of this particular system. That means one represents the direction of VD and the two represent the direction of your horizontal reaction at D and three represents your direction of the moment reacting couple or reacting moment at D. When it comes to the other side now, it's the same figure if I remove, you can see here A, B, C, D can move to D dash. Once the support is removed, it can move in horizontal direction, vertical direction and as well as it can rotate. The horizontal displacement from D to D dash horizontally, I have written it as delta DH. Any symbol you can use, big delta or small delta. Similarly, D to D dash in the vertical direction, I have written as delta DV. And the D moves to D dash and at the same time it rotates also with respect to vertical axis that component I have taken it as theta d. What are these three now? The movement of delta dx in the direction of x that is your coordinate 2. The movement of vertical direction in the vertical direction that is the direction is number 1 and the rotation will happen in the couple direction that is number 3. That means in either side here if you put a 
displacement matrix or force matrix. Now P will be equal to your P1, P2 and P3 pertaining to particularly this problem. There are three degrees of freedom, or three degrees of unknown indeterminacy that is equal to which are these P1, P2, P3 now. We know that this is your vertical reaction at A, this is your horizontal reaction, sorry, D, not A, horizontal reaction at D and moment at D. Because I can't use these values in the computer generation format or the software development to write a program, I have to place them in some other variable name, I put a variable name as P. P can be P1, P2 and P3. At the final, I can say that P1 is VD, P2 is HD and P3 is M. Whereas on the same lines, if you put your displacement matrix or deformation matrix, which are these values now? For equation, we put it as D1, D2 and D3. Whereas when it comes to the actual problem, what are these quantities? I substituted D1, that is your vertical displacement at D, delta dV as your 1. So that means your delta dV and this is your delta dH and the third is theta B, sorry theta D. So these two representations of the force and displacement, we call them as general coordinate system which is most useful in your matrix method of analysis whether it is flexibility approach or it is stiffness approach. Stop. Hi, let us continue the stiffness approach. Let me develop the equations first, basically that already I have discussed in brief in the introduction to matrix method of structural analysis. Let us go in detail with the matrix method of structural analysis by stiffness approach. To develop the equation, I have taken a simple beam AB when it is subjected to a loads of P1, P2 and so on, PI, PJ and then PN. And because of this loading system on the beam, you can see the second figure below that figure, you have deformation at D1, D2 and so on, DI, DJ and then DN. That means it means N number of degrees of freedom it means. So there are N deflections are there, N loads are there, we have to relate them accordingly so that to get the general equation of the stiffness. So what you have to find out this D1 means, D1 is not only by P1, the effect of other loads are also there on the deflection at 1. That means there are n coordinates, all the coordinates are the vertical deflections, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, so up to n. So to get this P1 and D, we got the matrices now, force vectors here are the vertical column matrix. There are P1 to Pn, there is n cross 1 and D1 to Dn is also n cross 1. So that means your stiffness matrix will be of the size n cross n. So n number of degrees of freedom, n number of forces. So you have n cross n. That means your k of the size n cross n, it contains k 1 1 and so on up to k n n. So all these coefficients we have to get it then you will get the formulation of the stiffness matrix. Once that is ready you will be knowing the force or displacement you can vice versa you can calculate any unknown quantities. So to find out these coefficients here I will generalize that as k i j. Stiffness coefficient at coordinate 1 due to force or displacement at j. That means it is a force developed due to unit displacement along the coordinate J. The force developed along the coordinate I due to unit displacement at J that is called as your stiffness coefficient for one particular quantity of the matrix. So thus you can generate the equation now. So. P1 is equal to K11 into D1 
plus k 1 2 into d 2 plus k 1 i into d i plus k 1 j into d j plus and so on plus k 1 n into d n that is your first equation. So that means to get this force developed here, the force one applied here because of the effect will be there from all the displacements here on the same P. So similarly, P2 is equal to K21 into D1, K22 into D2 plus so on, K2I into DI plus 2J into KJ and the last one K2n into dn. Like this it continues to i, ith coordinate, force at ith coordinate will be equal to K2i into di, sorry, Ki1 into d1, Ki2 into d2, and so on, k i i into d i, k i j into d j plus k i n into d. This will be your ith equation. So all these things will continue like this, number of equations. And the next equation will be p j, that will be equal to k j 1 into d 1 k j2 into d2 and so on, k i j into d i, sorry, k i i, k j i into d i plus k j j into d j plus k j n into d n, that will be your jth equation and we need to continue this formulation of the equation to the last force Pn on the system, it is Kn1 D1, Kn2 D2, Kni Di, Knj Dj, Knn Dn. that will be your nth equation. So it is simple, all the forces are indirectly or directly dependent on the deformations d1 to dn, vertically and as well as horizontal. So this same thing we can put it in the form of matrix that will give n cross n stiffness matrix size and this is a vertical matrix of size n cross 1 and similarly your displacement matrix dn, d1 to dn as your n cross 1. I will just take out this and put it in the matrix method. Left hand side p1, p2, pi, pj and then pn. This is n cross 1 is equal to k11, k21, ki1, kj1, kn1. Similarly, k12, k22, k i2, k j2, k n2. We need to extend this k 1 i, k 2 i, k i i, k i j, k n i. 
the next immediate is k 1 j k 2 j k i j k j j and then k n j and we will go to the last one k 1 n k 2 n k i n k j n k n you can see this is of the size n cross n multiplied by d1 d2 di dj dn You see the matrix simplicity now. Entire number of equations, I put it in terms of the matrix. It is easy to store these coordinates in the computer. Each value of k1112 can be stored in the name of two dimensional direction i and j. So i and j can take a value from 1 to n. So all these things are k1122, ii, jj, and nn. They are all called as leading diagonals. Half diagonal elements, they will be symmetrical. This term is K J I. So each column of the stiffness matrix can be obtained at one stretch. Any problem is given, any number of coordinates, apply the unit deformation at coordinate 1 and find out the forces developed at all other coordinates 1 to n, you will get this column. All the coefficients of this first column can be get. Similarly, to get the coefficients of the second column, apply the unit deformation at 2, whether it may be force or it may be deflection or rotation and find out the forces developed at all other coordinates. So you can come into this general one now, k i j here, apply at j, find out the forces at all the coordinates, you will get the values. Similarly, I can get all of them. This is in general, you put it as P matrix of size n cross 1 is equal to matrix K, stiffness matrix we call it as N cross N multiplied by matrix D, it is of the size N cross N. This is what we use it as stiffness relation with differential deformations at various coordinates. If there is a known deformation then this will come as D minus D1. So applied deformation and the developed deformation, both of them you can put it and calculate the values. So this is the basis of your stiffness approach. Using this basic difference equation, I can able to find the solution. So before going into the actual problem, I need to find out these coordinates. How to find these coordinates, like stiffness coordinates at various things. With simple problem of one beam fixed at both ends, we can calculate all of them. You need to remember those values you can directly apply to the problems to generate the stiffness coefficients. So I told you in the earlier session that how to develop the stiffness matrix and their coordinates. So I have taken a member from a structure wherein you have six coordinates in total. Four of them are deflections, two are rotations. I have marked the coordinates as one and two for the rotations at A and B. And three and four are the vertical deflection at A and B. A means the left support here and B is right point. And five and six representing the coordinates. That means the probable direction of the deflection in the horizontal direction at A and in the horizontal direction at that means I have six coordinates here, your stiffness matrix of the size 6 by 6. So totally I have six coordinates and 6 by 6. It is very easy to develop them. A simple thing, use the free body diagram of the member and what you know from the slope deflection method that itself will be your coordinate sets. So first thing is I will take this first case now. What are the values of the forces developed at 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6 giving a unit rotation at 1. So once you give a unit rotation, there will be forces developed at all the coordinates. Wherever it is not, it will be equal to 0. 
to represent that now, that means here, I will take it as theta A is equal to 1, remaining all theta B, delta AV, delta BV, delta AH, and delta BH, all of them should be equal to 0. You have to arrange your member in such a way that except theta A, remaining all deformations in the given member should be equal to 0. How it can be done? Simple. Take a member, put a fixed end at A and as well as B, rotate this fixed end through an amount of uniform rotation here of unity that is theta A equal to since the end is fixed here at A and as well as B, you don't get theta B here. Theta B equal to 0. Delta BV is also 0. It doesn't move in the vertical direction. Delta BH is also equal to 0. So coming to this end A here, here I have done theta A is rotated here, whereas delta AV and delta AH, both of them are 0. You don't have any load applied here. Applied load is also zero. So let us write your slope deflection equation. You already know that MAB, if you remember this equation now, it is MFAB plus 2EI by L, 2 times of theta A plus theta B minus 3 delta by L. So look at this figure, which are the terms are not considered here. There is no applied load, this is equal to 0. Fixed end moment due to applied load is 0. There is no theta b, it is also equal to 0. And of course there is no movement in the vertical or horizontal direction of any supports, this is also equal to 0. So your MAB is equal to 2 EI by L into 2 times of theta A that is equal to 4Ei by L into theta A. What is your definition of any stiffness coefficient what we said? It is the force developed along the coordinate 1 due to unit rotation at that point. So unit rotation let it be equal to 1. This automatically will comes down to your K11. K11 represents it is the force developed along the coordinate 1 when that member is rotated through unit rotation at 1. At 1 we are rotated equal to unity and I am finding M11 that is nothing but your M AB that is equal to now 4 EI divided by L. Let me take this as 1 dash 1 because under category 1 first equation. Similarly I can use the rotation moment at B now. So to make this to be zero rotation, there should be a moment developed here in the opposite direction. So that will come here. So MBA is equal to, we have the equation, slope deflection MFAB plus 2EI by L. It is theta A plus 2 times theta B minus 3 delta by same condition, no load, 0, no rotation at B, 0, no translation in the vertical direction, it is also 0. Your equation of MBA will be equal to 2 EI by L into theta A. We know it is theta A equal to 1. When this becomes 1, MBA will be equal to your K21. What is K21? It is the force induced along the coordinate 2 due to unit rotation along the coordinate 1. So that is equal to 2 EI by L. This is your 1 dash 2. How much is from equation to equation 2? What is the difference now? It is 4 and this is 2. It means if you apply a moment here so that it will rotate through a unit rotation, half of that moment will be transferred to the far end that transfer what we call as carry over factor half of it 
half of 4a by l is 2a by l. Now, I need to find out the reactions here now. That means at 3 and 4, there is a moment developed here, k11 and k1. So, how to get that now? You have to find the reaction at a and b due to applied. So, what is that reaction now? I will put a free body diagram here. You have this moment induced MAB that is nothing but equal to K11. You have moment induced here it is MBA that is equal to K21. And let me write this, assume the reactions here that will be equal to RB and RA. Of course, you have this EIL and cross sectional area. This is A and You know this value is already known from the equation. This is 4EI by L and this is equal to 2EI by L. If you take a moment about A now, sigma of MA equal to 0, your basic equilibrium equation, treat clockwise for positive. If you take a moment about A, you will get this first 4EI by L plus on the other side it is 2EA by L and I have a reaction RB, what is the distance from A to B? It is L, it is in the anti-clockwise direction, minus RB into L will be equal to 0 because you do not get RA because we are taking moment about A. So therefore, what is the value of RB now? If you transfer this to the other side, it is positive 4 plus 2, 6 and I have to transfer this all to the left hand side. So it is 6 EI divided by L square. So transfer this to the right hand side, divide throughout by L, 4 plus 2, 6, EI divided by L into L, it is L square. This is the value of RB. RB you can see, which is the coordinate there? Coordinate 4. So this is the fourth coordinate here. So this will be refers to your equation 1 dash 4. Although it is not continuous, 1 dash 3 also will come. Is there any load is applied on this beam now, vertical load? No. We do not have any load. So, what will be the value of Ra now? It should be equal to Rb. The difference is it should be acting in the downward dash. So, that will come from the condition that sigma of Fy equal to 0, treat positive for upward forces. So, I have taken Ra assumed in the vertical direction plus Rb assumed in the vertical direction is equal to 0. Therefore, your value of Ra will be equal to minus 6Ei divided by L square. What is the direction of Ra here? That is the coordinate direction. So, it is assumed upward as a positive one. The value I am getting it is negative. So, it is 1 dash 3. I got 2, 1, 2, 3 and 4. 2 moments and 2 forces. What about this horizontal force 5 and 6? What is the development here? I do not have any load in the horizontal direction. So, it is ultimately equal to 0. You do not get these two values. The reactions here, whatever we can write it is RAH and RBH. Since you do not have any load acting in the horizontal direction, I can directly put it using this equation sigma fx equal to 0 positive for right Rah that is equal to Rbh that is equal to 0. They are nothing but equal to now. What is this Rah corresponds to the force along the direction coordinate 5? So it is k. Phi 1 is equal to 0, that is your 1 dash 5. K61 is also equal to 0, that is 1 dash 6. So, first column of your stiffness matrix, 6 elements K11 to K61 applied unit rotation along the coordinate 1, that is theta A equal to 1, and we found all the values that comprises 6 values. It is the first column coefficients, k11 to k. Just remember these 4 EI by L, 2 EI by L, 
plus, sorry, first one is minus 6a by L square, next is 6a by L square plus, and these two are 0. The same values we will get once you take the coordinate 2 also. Only with a little change in the values that you can do it now here. Second case, theta b equal to 1, whereas all other values are 0. How to get it? Take the same beam. So, because of these two conditions, fixed at A and fixed at B, with a rotation unit along the direction of MAB or MBA, so this will be now delta BH and delta BV equal to 0, whereas here theta A is 0, delta AV is 0, delta AH is also equal to 0. So I have written the free body diagram of the member, the same values I have put it in the form of forces developed along the coordinates 1 to 6. So only thing is rotation given here, because of this rotation there will be moment induced at B and half of it will be transferred to A and two reactions you will get. Again in this case also horizontal forces are 0. So same equation you just repeat here. Let me write MAB, MFAB, 2A by L, 2 times theta A plus theta B minus 3 delta by L. So same condition, no applied load, so MFAB is 0, theta A is 0 and no vertical displacement here, sinking or settlement, it is also 0. So what is the equation now? MAB will be equal to 2A by L into theta B. Once we give this as 1, this becomes K12. So where I have applied the rotation here, unit rotation along the coordinate 2, that will be your second subscript. The first one where you are measuring the force or couple, that is your first subscript. K12 will be equal to 2EI by L, that will be your equation 2 dash 1. Coming to the next condition, MBA, MFBA, 2EI by L, theta A plus theta B minus 2 times theta b, 3 delta by L. Same condition, no load, no rotation at A, no sinking or settlement at A or B. So the equation now MBA, 2A by L into 2 times of theta by 2 into 2 is 4, A by L into theta b. Once you give this theta b as unit rotation, this will be equal to a K22. So that is equal to 4EI by L. This will be 2 dash. So you are measuring the moment along the coordinate 2, that is your rotation direction 2, and applied the unit rotation along the coordinate. 2, that is K22 is 4A by L. You can observe now your K11 is 4A by L and K22 is 4A by L, whereas K12 equal to K21, it is 2A by L. Half of it is transferred to other end. So near end is here, it is B, the far end is A. The same thing you can put it here now in the figure. This is 2A by L, MAB, whereas MBA is 4A by L. 
If you use the same condition here, same equation, sigma m a equal to 0, 4 a by l positive, 2 a by l is positive, r b into l, it is equal to 0, therefore r b is again 6 a by l square, that will be equal to your 1 dash 4. Same condition, apply unit forces in the vertical direction equal to 0, r a plus r b equal to 0, r b is known 6, so r a is minus 6 a by l square, it is equal to your 1 dash 3 and since you do not have any vertical loads or horizontal loads applied on this beam, so it is equal to 0. Sigma f x equal to 0, R a h and R e b h both are 0, both of them are these things. So again we got 6 coefficients, these 6 coefficients pertaining to the second column of your stiffness matrix K21 to K26. Sorry, I have to rewrite these values here. This is K21 to 24. This is your 24. This is your 23. This is your 25. And this is two. This is 5262. And of course, this one is K23. The same thing applies for the previous case. So we got the two vertical columns coefficients of the stiffness matrix. Let us move to the third coordinate, which is the third coordinate that is the vertical arrow there. So what this indicates now, it means you are delta A equal to 1. And theta A, theta B, delta B V, delta A H and delta B H, all of them are 0. How to represent this now? Take the same member, give a unit displacement in the vertical direction that is the direction of the coordinate 3 and see that we should not get any other quantity. So for that I have to fix, I given only unit displacement along the coordinate 3. So this is equal to your delta A equal to 1, whereas other quantities theta A delta AH equal to 0. When it comes to here, theta B delta BV and delta BH equal to 0. So with respect to this now, again we need to use the same conditions here, MAB, the same equation, MFAB plus 2EI by L, 2 times theta A plus theta B minus 3 delta by so which are the quantities which are 0 here, look at this condition 3 now, except delta A, all of them are 0, so no load, moment is 0, no rotation at A, no rotation at B. What is the value of MAB now? MAB will be equal to 2EA by L into 3 delta by L, 2 into 3 is 6. EI divided by L square and minus term will come outside minus 6 EI by L square into delta. Actually this delta is nothing but the relative displacement of A with respect to B. If there is a displacement here that also we need to consider. Now it is 0. What are the relative displacement? It is 1. So 1 in the positive direction, 
So this will be equal to 1. So what is the value of moment developed now? 6 EI divided by L square. So what is this MAB now? That is nothing but equal to K13. That is the moment or force induced along the coordinate 1 due to unit displacement at 3. That is nothing but equal to minus 6 EI divided by L square. Just refer the previous K31 will be equal to minus 6 EI by L square. So that is because it is symmetric. So take the other condition MBA will be equal to MFBA plus 6 C 2 EI by L theta A plus 2 times theta B 3 delta by L. So here also same thing this is 0 this one is also 0 theta b is also 0, it is 2 ei by l and minus 3 delta by l. So, m b a will be equal to minus 6 ei divided by l square into delta. So, again this delta is relative to displacement of a with respect to b, it is equal to 1. So, this is equal to now k 2 3 is equal to minus 6 EI divided by L square. This is your 3, 1. This is your 3, 2. Hmm, it's not 3, 2. It is 3, 1. Reverse 1, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, we got the first two elements of the third column of your stiffness matrix. Let me find out now. To that, I need to put the free body diagram of AB now. Take out the supports and put all the possible reactions. RA, RB. What is the moment induced here now? Moment induced is minus, let me put it anti clockwise, 6 EI by L square, and this one is also minus 6 EI by, that's what is MAB and MB. Of course, the length of the member is L. If I take moment about A, sigma of MA equal to 0, treat positive for the clockwise moments. So you have minus 6 EI by L square because anti-clockwise minus 6 EI by L square anti-clockwise minus RB into L is equal to 0. So all the three are anti-clockwise now 6 EI, 6 EI and RB into L. Therefore what is the value of RB now? Transfer this to the right hand side, L to the denominator. So RB is positive, it is minus 6, minus 6 will become 12. 12 EI divided by L cube. So this is case 3 and equation 4 because it is the reaction RB. This is nothing but equal to your K43. Use the other equation sigma f y equal to 0, treat positive for vertical forces upwards. You have R a plus R b should be equal to 0. I do not have any load vertically applied on this member except this displacement, you do not have any other load. So, whatever R a should be equal to R b, only difference is it is opposite to R. So R B is minus, so R A will become plus. So therefore here R A will be equal to minus of R B that is equal to plus 12 E I divided by L cube that is 3 dash 3 K 
थ्री थ्री वन मोर थिंग यू नीड टू रिमेंबर हियर ऑलवेज द कोफिशियंट्स हैविंग सेम सब्सक्रिप्ट फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड लाइक के वन वन के वन टू टू के थ्री थ्री एंड सो ऑन टू के एन एन ऑल ऑफ देम शुड बी ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव इट कैनॉट बिकम नेगेटिव वाई द रीजन इज वी गिव द कॉर्डिनेट डायरेक्शन हियर डायरेक्शन ऑफ द थ्री इज अपर्ड्स आई एम गिविंग द मूवमेंट ऑफ द रिफ्लेक्शन इन द सेम डायरेक्शन If it is downwards, I'll give the moment in the downward direction. So whether it is upwards or downwards, your all leading diagonal elements should be always positive. If you are getting negative, means you are doing some mistake in the calculations. So this will be your fourth co coefficients of that third column, and sigma f x equal to zero. Again, there is no horizontal load. Both of them are zero here. That is R. A H and R B H should be equal to zero. Since there is no load, R A H plus R B H should be equal to zero. So both should be zero. They are nothing but equal to your K five three equal to zero and K six three equal to zero. That will be your equation three dash five and three dash six. so let us move to the next column column number 4 which is that coordinate na vertical arrow that number coordinate number 4 that means i have to give a unit displacement or deflection in the upward direction at b that will constitute all the values so except that remaining all should be equal to 0 How you will get it now? Theta A, theta B, delta A V, delta A H, delta B H equal to zero. No. Okay. So let me give this condition now. delta b equal to 1 that is your b your a so to get that condition let me introduce the supports at a and b as fixed so in this case i can put it as theta a delta av delta ah equal to 0 and here theta b delta bh equal to 0 same conditions now you can observe now mab same mfab it is 0 so you don't have any load 2a by l 2 times theta a is 0 theta b is 0 now the difference is with respect to a your support b is moving in the upward direction your equation general equation refers to support b should be below the support a so this term is actually minus delta why our sign convention stands for this way your support should be like this with respect to a b should come downwards the same thing happened in the previous case whereas now it is a reversal your delta b we can put it equal to plus 1 but minus delta because it is moving upwards with respect to a so finally this becomes plus that is the only difference here in case of fourth column so it is equal to plus and this is also equal to plus this is also equal to plus this will be your k14 and this is your 4 1 coming to the other end mba same condition except this plus 3 delta by l the rest of the values are same so this will become plus and this is plus this is k24 and this is 4 dash 2 same values only changes plus and minus you can go back to your first case where in your 14 will be 6a by l square if we take the second case 2 4 is plus 6a by l and if you coming to this one now 
I'll just change them to clockwise now because you have clockwise moments. 6a by L square plus 6a by L square plus minus Rb into L. So the same thing now. If you take moment about A for this free body diagram, it will be same thing. So Rb will be equal to plus 12a by L cube. Because you have plus and plus 12, if you transfer to this, L comes to denominator. This is the value and this value is your K4, 4. four. This is 4, 4 and this one is your 4, 3, that is 3, 4 actually. So this become plus, sorry, minus. Huh? So this will become minus. Ra and Rb would be equal and opposite, this becomes minus. So these six coordinates and the next two, 5, 4 and 6, 4 are 0 because I don't have any horizontal load acting on the given structure. So both of them are 0. So these two equations are nothing but 4, 5 and 4, 6. Column 4, 5th and 6th elements are also 0. So you got how many elements altogether now? 6 into 4, 24 elements we got it. First, second, third and fourth column. In each column there are six elements. So let us move to the next coordinate direction, which is the next coordinate direction number five. It is delta a h equal to one. Theta a, theta b, delta a v, delta b v and delta b h should be equal to zero. How to represent this now? It is again same beam AB. Your force is applied in this direction now. You can see the direction is towards right side. That means A moves to A dash by an amount 1 that is equal to your delta B, sorry, AH. So once you move it to this, this is fixed now. Theta A is equal to delta a v there is no vertical movement no rotation so both of them are zero coming to this support b here theta b delta b v delta b h should be equal to zero if you write the free body diagram of this member now i can put the value of m a b m b a Vertical reaction Rb, vertical reaction Ra, you will get some reaction at A, Rah, and you will get Rbh. If you coming to these equations, everything is zero. Even this is also zero. This refers to the vertical displacement, relative displacement of A with respect to B. You don't have any vertical displacement here. It is horizontally moved from A to A dash by an amount of unit value. So you don't get this value. So finally your MAB is equal to 0 that is equal to K61 that is equation condi sorry 51 sorry. And similarly, if you take this condition, all of them are 0, MBA is 0, so your K15, yes, just K15, K25, that is equation 52, it is also 0, no moment is developed. And coming to this moment, sigma ma equal to 0. Since you don't have any moment, this is 0. This is 0. 
you don't get any vertical reaction because no vertical force is applied here. So this is also zero. This one is also zero. Rb equal to zero. That is nothing but equal to K four five. Your equation five four. And if you use sigma Fy, again same condition. Ra is also equal to zero. That is equal to K five five. Now. What is the force developed due to this unit displacement in the direction of 5 and 6? Which equation we need to use? Which is the equation now? Go back to your strength of materials, basic equation. What is your delta L, a deformation, horizontal deformation of any bar? It is nothing but equal to PL by E. If you give unit displacement, what is the force developed here? That will become your stiffness coefficient. So P is equal to AE by L into delta L. This equation we need to use. How much is delta L here? Along the direction of 5, it is equal to 1. So this is equal to 1. So therefore, your P equal to now, AE by L, this P is nothing but equal to R A H. That means I need to apply a force of P here that is equal to A E by L, then this will move by an amount equal to 1. Horizontally moves to this position means I would have applied a force of A E by L. This is nothing but equal to your K 5 or oh, sorry, this is K53. This will be your K55, that is equation 5 of the fifth item. Once you got this K55, this is equal to A by L. Then if we use sigma fx equal to 0, this force should be retained by this end. The same amount will be transferred to the other end, but in the opposite direction to maintain sigma of fx equal to 0, positive 1. So Rah plus Rbh should be equal to 0. So that will come here, Rah plus Rbh should be equal to 0 to maintain this condition. I know RAH is A E by L. So A E by L plus R A H R B H sorry equal to zero. Therefore, what is the value of R B H now? Minus A E by L. So this will be your coefficient equation six five. It is five six. So we got the elements of the fourth, fifth column now. First four elements are zero. Because of this lateral movement of A to A dash, it doesn't involve in the definition of the formation of the moment at one and two. It doesn't involve to get the vertical reaction also at three and four. Only you'll get the value last two, five and six. Both are same, but with opposite direction. Your K A H K phi phi. That's why I told phi phi should be always positive A E by L, and your K six phi is minus A E by L. So what will be the last column now? Sixth condition. Your delta B H should be equal to one, and Theta A, theta B, delta AB, AV, delta AH and delta BV should be equal to 0. Let me put it here. B, A. What is the direction of the 6 coordinate here? It is towards right side. Let me move this B to B dash by an amount of unit displacement 
that is nothing but your delta B H. So when it moves, see that your A should not move. So I am fixing that. After moving, let me fix this. So theta B delta B V equal to 0. Theta A delta A V delta A H should be equal to 0. Again in this case also first four elements of the sixth column are zero because of this lateral movement of B to B dash it doesn't affect the end moment and end vertical reactions. So MAB is zero it is K160 <coughs> so it is K160 it is equation 61 similarly MBA is 0, your K26 is 0, that is your 62 equation. And same condition for reaction RB and RA, both are 0. So this is K46, 64 is 0. K63. 63 is 0. Let us take the last fifth and sixth element now. Same condition here. A mood B to B dash by an amount 1. That is nothing but your delta L. What is the force developed at this point? Okay. The same equation now. P is equal to a e by L into delta or delta L. So the member has same A e by L, no difference here. Once you move this to unit displacement here, so P is equal to A e by L because this is equal to 1. That is nothing but equal to your K 6, 6. Reaction developed at 6 means it is along the coordinate 6. I applied the unit displacement at coordinate 1. So it is equal to K66. That means it will be acting in this direction. Whatever this force here, P, that is equal to AE by L. Once you this apply towards the direction of the coordinate 6, it elongates. So I have a reaction acting in the right direction. Opposite to that will be at A. Opposite to that means you can see here 5 is actual coordinate is towards right. I have to take it as the opposite direction. Therefore, K56 will be equal to minus AE by L. This is your 6, 6. This is your 6, 5. So, totally we got all the 36 elements now, 6 columns and then 6 rows. Let me compile them here for only stiffness matrix. K66 6 by 6. K11 4 E i by L K 2 1 2 E i by L K 3 1 minus 6 E i by L square. In its first case vertical reaction at A it is opposite downwards that is why it is minus and K 4 1 is plus 6 EI by L square and the last two are 0 and 0. We will take this first column now. Second one K12 is 2 EI by L and K22 is 4 EI by L and K32 is minus 6 EI by L square 
and this is plus 6a by L square, still these two are 0. Coming to the next column, K31, it is minus 6a by L square, K32, it is plus plus I think it is also minus. Yeah, both are minus. It is 6 minus 6a by L square and k33 three three is 6 or 12. It is 12 ei by L cube and then minus 12 ei by L cube 0 and 0. It is plus 6a by L square k41, you can see here k14, it is also plus here and 6ei by L square and you have minus 12 EI by L cube, this is plus 12 EI by L cube, 0 and 0. All of them are 0, K55 is AE by L, K56 is minus AE by L. And again the last column, sixth one, minus A e by L plus A e by L. So you got all the 36 elements here, K of the matrix size 6 cross 6, all the problems except the trusses your beams or portal frames, anything here, it is, yeah, sway or without sway, all of them can be solved by knowing these quantities now. So, you remember this, you can observe now, all the leading elements of the diagonal K11, K22, K33, K44 and K5 and K66, should be positive, it cannot be negative, whereas half diagonal can be negative or positive can be zero. Here you won't get zero also. If you are getting zero means it is not a structure. That means you are not able to give any rotation at that point. Then you cannot consider that particular coordinate itself, you can eliminate that coordinate. You know the value already, it is zero, you don't need to find out the value of the deformation at that particular point. If you know this six by six, you can able to solve all the values. Remember this, four, two, six by L square, six by L square plus, minus and plus. Two, four, minus plus, minus, minus, plus, minus here, plus, plus, minus, plus, and less, plus and minus, minus and if you remember these six, 36 values out of 36, 8 plus 8, 16 or 0. So you remember only 20 out of the 20 except 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 20 minus 6, 14, remaining 7 are same quantities like your 2i, 2i minus 6 to minus 6 plus 6a by L square plus 6a by L square. Similarly, you can see here, this is your second row, third column, second column, third. See here, fourth row, second value, second row, fourth value. Same thing here. So, this is your stiffness, coefficients of the matrix, stiffness. Using this particular problems can be analyzed, that we will take up in the next class. Thank you.